that we finish that out and don't screw it, don't screw it up by adding more more changes than than necessary because there's already a bunch of changes that are going to be conflicts there. So, um, list master with main PR. Okay, and then what was the last thing? Oh uh, yeah, that's it. One, okay. I had some uh, doubts regarding auto ML. Okay, uh, yeah. That uh, GSOC idea thing. Yeah. That's okay. it. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, Nitesh, uh, anything from you today? Um, no. Uh, I don't want to discuss yeah, anything okay. today because. Yeah, but yeah, I'm good. See. That's always good. That's always good. All right. So we will jump right in. <clears throat> okay. Uh, right. So questions. So, oops. Okay. We are waiting until uh, accuracy uh, changes. Are complete because that has been very complicated. Okay, um, and then All right, let's see what these are. And we'll see. So we'll see what they are, and then we'll prioritize. OK, validate for my message format. Um, um, oh, great. Yay. OK, poll. All right, if you say so. All right, <clears throat> so let's talk about commit message formatting first, because um, that is, OK, and does this issue work? Issues, yeah, great. And this is, OK, this guy, all right. Um, OK, the, actually, let's talk about this first. So basically, the thing, what's going on here is that we don't have um, when you add something, so when you add a new model, you usually will need to add it within a new plugin, right? So if you are using this cat boost, that's from PyPy, Py, 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 right? Um, so, and, and I'm assuming this is something you install from Py, PyPy, right? Um, yes, pip install, great. Um, so this is something that you would need, um, you would need to create a separate plugin for um, now we're, we're, we're sort of in the middle of how plugins work is changing. So this is a great, you know, this is a great, great, great implementation within a file, right? Um, which is, you know, what that first tutorial sort of takes you through. And then you can, you know, use this from the command line and stuff. If it's just in this single file, um, you can reference it using its Python, the, the entry point path to the model, right? Um, the thing is, if you want to reference it from this entry point, then you have to make it a package and to run it in the CI and to add it, you know, and all, all basically if you have for every distinct dependency that we have. So, for example, cat boost is a new distinct dependency. So it's not, you know, it's not, uh, for example, the source MySQL stuff. It's dependent on the MySQL library, um, you know, the uh, TensorFlow stuff, it's dependent on TensorFlow. And so we try to create a new plugin or a new package for every um, for every 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 set of code that has a distinct set of dependencies, right? And this enables us to, you know, not install because the thing is, if you install all these machine learning libraries, you end up with like gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of stuff. Um, and so not everybody wants to install everything. So this is why we have this plugin system. And uh, so you 
you, we we create a plugin anytime we have you know a new distinct dependency, and this would be a case where we would like you've done create DFML model capus and model capus. That's exactly correct. There would just be a lot more files under there, um, you know things like the setup config and and stuff like that. Right, the setup config is how we're defining our packages. Um, so right now we are actually in the process of of changing things. So. Um, and oh, man, I wish it would give me the titles. Sometimes it wants to convert them. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, Capo's classify. This is 1053. Okay. So good start at a model I implemented in a single importable file um, to make it a package you'd need to go through the packaging packaging tutorial um, hold on hold off on this for now you can you can you can do it you can do it now to learn uh, but we are holding off on accepting contributions uh, until uh, Yash figures out how to do this second party plugin thing that we've been talking about. Um, figures out how second party plugins are going to work um, and essentially what that's going to be is 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 we're going to try to host a bunch of plugins uh, github.com we're going to try to host a bunch of plugins under this org um, and so for example this is the model transformers one that we split out um, and uh, this was contributed to us by Himachu and, and then Himachu, unfortunately, none, none of us had time to update the APIs um, and, and Himachu is busy with a full-time job now. So uh, it got moved into here and, and sort of the idea is we'll have this support matrix of understanding, you know, what plugins work with each other because sometimes you get these version conflicts. Um, and I think whoever did the Orion model recently ran into this, but you'll run into these, these contextual version conflict errors where, um, package resources will will throw up exceptions when you load code uh, because um, certain thing each certain packages depend on versions of things that are not what is installed so for example if if you have a version range restrictor on numpy um, and you say well let me just pull up this as an example so tensorflow greater than 2.0 um, but transformers less than 3.1. So as soon as we installed a greater version of transformers, transformers required a greater version of, or when we when when we we have a a greater than 2.4 in another package, and transformers has a you know less than something in, in it. So when you require transformers, it means that you can't use TensorFlow 2.4 and it'll throw up an exception. And there's, this is, you guys will run into this all the time um, because all of these libraries have a bunch of conflicting stuff. So we're trying to figure out this second party plugin situation. Um, so hold off on, on doing more work here unless you have, unless you wanted some specific feedback, I can give you some specific feedback um, if you're trying to use this for something right now um if something's not working but otherwise we're going to hold off on this um and, and i will mark it as second party plugin so that we know that we can get back to it then um once that's complete is there anything you wanted specific feedback on there or can that wait are you are you trying to actively use the model for something and, and you need you need help getting it working or or are you just doing it to complete the issue uh, yeah, actually, uh, I, my target was to uh, uh, merge this peer so that uh, along with this peer, I can, I am, I am, I will see that how the things are working uh -huh. in this uh, uh, plugin okay. systems. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, like, I have one query uh, in the just for uh, like how the things are working over here. So, can you move to the peer? Yeah. Where did it go? 
There it is. Like that. Uh, in the uh, class, uh, uh, the CAD boost, uh, CAD boost classifier class, uh, we are uh, taking lots of param parameters. I am taking the references from the XGBoost, like these, uh, they both are almost similar. Yep. So even in, when, even in XGBoost thing, uh, we are not using all the parameters, like uh, we are using L, uh, learning rate and underscore estimators. But along with this, there are various other parameters. So we are not uh, including that uh, in this class, in the XGBoost thing. So like my- That uh, aren't getting used. My, they're, they're unused parameters. Yeah, uh, in Exibust uh, library, uh, there are many more parameters along with learning limit and uh, n underscore estimator. So why aren't we uh, including it's that? Probably just that no one got around to doing it. Um, let's see. I think this was yeah. just meant as more of a quick example at the time to show how to, how to get it working. Um, Let's see. Um, so yeah, all of these you're saying we're not using some of them. Yeah, um, uh, there are many more uh, parameters which we have not included here. Yeah, you know, so so this is a good this is a good catch. Um, so where is? Let's see if we can find the docs for XGB regressor. Um, okay, come on now. XGB regressor, bases, XGB model, parameters. Okay, so this probably has. Um, so I think the thing is that that we have hard coded those config structures for this guy, um, and there are several functions that allow us to. Um, so we, we hard coded the, the config values for those guys. Let's see, where is the API reference? Yeah, util config, config inspect. Okay, this should have a. Okay, that's really annoying. Okay, man, we need examples for these. Um, Okay, so we have these make config numpy and make config inspect functions, which basically look at, and this one doesn't have, okay, every, all the docs, all the docs are annoying today. Um, where is, oh my god, all right, okay. Um, let's just go to XGBoost then. So we have these two functions, and, and, and uh, the make config numpy will parse a numpy style doc string to build the appropriate config parameter uh, dictionary uh, or the profit config structure um, and it, it will make sure that everything that's referenced like everything here anything that's listed it for in the documentation string becomes part of the you know it, it automatically creates properties for those um, so and do, does does anybody remember where are we where are we doing that we have some places where we do Dell um, we do asdict and then we do del. Um, okay. Del, where is this? Does anyone remember? I'm trying to find the example where we turn the config dictionary into a, or the config structure into a dict and then pass it to the model as a config. Where is that? I know someone wrote it. Um, I know it was me. Yep, I think <laughs> it's it's in LightGBM yeah. or I think in XGBM. Okay. Yeah. It must be. Let's let's look in LightGBM. Do it. Oh man, I thought I finished merging that. <laughs> I think That's I, what I am <laughs> used. That's a great. I think, man, I think I had to push something to it. So, this is a good example here. I swear. 
Oh yeah, I had to fix that. Um, I added that. Okay. Where did it go? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Good job, Natash. All right. So in this, we have so this config. So make numpy. No. Yes. Yeah, so we call make numpy config, and we pass it l lgbm model. Um, and where is, okay, hopefully this links me to the code source. Great. So, and you'll notice, so make numpy config is going to look at this, it's going to parse out this doc string and it's going to create appropriate, you know, it's going to create appropriate values, um, of the types listed with the default values listed. Um, so if we were to go to, okay, well, we don't have the docs page built because it's not merged. Um, I swear. It must have something must have failed the CI because I think I was waiting on the CI. But we call is it just a stupid LGTM? No, it's a docs. All right, okay. We're gonna focus. All right. Um we're just make numpy config. So we call this make config numpy, and that parses this doc string and it will build the config structure that's appropriate, and then we can add any other, you know, properties that we may need to add there. Um and so, for example, you know, we, we want everything that's that would come from parsing this and we want features, predict and directory. Um, then so then what we can do is we can basically convert it to a dictionary. We can delete the things that we've added. And so now we only have things that came from the from the, you know, from the possible parameters here and we just do variable expansion to pass them all so this is the ideal way to do do things like this like what you're talking about um where you're saying you know why haven't we used all of them it's because we didn't i don't think we had that function at the time this code was written um so or either that or either xpg regressor did not um have a numpy style doc string or it did not um have um a type hints on it because you also you can use make config inspect if there's type hints um, and we need to 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 document all this more um, so and let's make a note of that so we need to document um, make config inspect slash numpy uh, and when to use in the new model tutorials um so let's see all right so we will just disappeared okay um we'll make sure we document that because that's that's important because as you're going through and creating these models you know um <laughs> this is the easiest way to do it so let's let's make sure we do that and let's say light gbm is a good example um all right so then what what else were you saying on this so you wanted to figure out the plugin system and you wanted to um you wanted to you know you were just playing around with writing a model um, I would suggest going through the rest of that packaging tutorial um, or going through the packaging tutorial uh, because you'll end up with, um, you know, you'll, so you did the writing a model, I assume, and now, now, you know, going, now you want to go through this packaging tutorial because this will show you this command will give you that whole directory structure and you basically take this and you move it under, um, uh, model slash whatever. Now the thing is, this is this is going to change when we have the second party plugins. But right now, that's sort of the way things have worked. Is is you would move it under? Is that what it says down here? Yeah, it's it's mentioned. So you move it under, you know, that path, um, and then you submit a PR. Um, so so that would be sort of the extension of what what you've done there. And this will show you how to write tests and things, which is going to be, let's see, where is that? And then we have also the documentation part of this. Um, and this will show you how to write the console test, um, the, the, the tests for the um, console commands that go along with it. Um, great. So any other questions on that? 
Uh, no. Okay. So. So finish the packaging tutorial. But like I said, we're going to wait on hold, merging those until we get to the third, the second party plugins, because uh, that will that will sort of make everything make more sense. All right. I have already completed that packaging tutorial. You have? Okay. Um, do you have any questions then, if on the plugin system or, or figuring out? You know, you said you're trying to figure out the plugin system. Do you have any questions on how it works or, or you know, how you how you get it to do what you want it to do? Not until now. Okay, just let us know. Just let us know, and that's that. If you come up with any questions, that's a good thing to cover in the meeting, um, because it's. I think we've covered it in a few meetings actually, and and I'm not sure. I think it might be in the meeting minutes where we've talked about entry points and stuff, um, and, and the recordings there can give you more insight into how the whole thing works. All right. So, so in, while we're talking about the rest of your stuff, what what are your questions on the audio ML idea? Uh, actually, uh, according to the idea, we uh, we have to first hyper uh, tune the hyperparameter, and we have to choose a model. Uh, that's our target. But uh, my question was, uh, do we need to implement a plugin type thing? Uh, as there are some AutoML frameworks available, such as AutoSQL and AutoPyTorch, or we need to create a new AutoML framework? That was my question. We're creating a new AutoML framework um, because we already have like AutoSKLearn, um, and I think that H2O model does some AutoML too. So we're basically trying to, you know, so we have this this eco we have this like ecosystem of plugins, right? And so now the goal here is to be able to use models to optimize other models, right? Um, and 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 figure out, you know, what what. How do how do I tune type of parameters of the models that I, we have in our ecosystem? You know, under the plugins page, using the models we have under the plugins page, right? And and sort of you, yeah. That's that is that is the goal here. Um, and then also the extension of this is figuring out, okay, how do we how do we how do we integrate the data flow part and data flow cleanup part um, into this? Um, so. But you know that's sort of an extension of this whole thing. Um, any other questions on that? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, great. Um, okay, so yeah, we are implementing from ourselves, uh, not wrapping another. Auto ML library. All right. Um, okay. So let's see. We have a few other people that joined. Um, so what? What? Let's see. Who? Who joined? Hashim. Do you have anything you want to talk about today? Uh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you if. Uh... We are already doing multi-output uh, models. I don't believe we have any models that that predict multiple outputs. Um, that's that's something that that would be would be good to, to look into though i don't think there's anything that restricts us from doing that at the moment we just don't have any implemented that do that and that that actually yeah if you're thinking about use cases that's a good one i i had run into that a while ago wishing we had that um i can't remember yeah, why yeah. yeah i was thinking i could add that uh, add support for that and then the use case for that yeah that would be great yeah i think that's a good one um all right cool yeah, I have curated uh, some other use cases as well. I'll send you those offline. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't have anything to discuss at the moment. All right, great. Good stuff. Um, and let's see, we also have Sanjapan. Um, do you have anything today? Uh, not of uh, discussing anything like I'm uh, working on two PRs like uh, and then the last uh, meeting as I said so today nothing as of like to discuss okay let's see all right now uh, which PRs are those 
uh, okay one is uh, the adding version and execution mode to the data flow document okay great that's a good one execution mode to data flow document okay and then what's the other one yeah and the darts model so i, I will oh, yeah. just make a, a revised pr on it in like by tomorrow only but tomorrow day after tomorrow okay and and i think that's basically on hold though too um uh -huh. with, with the second party situation so okay um sudhanshu uh yeah uh so i actually wanted to show you like uh what i have been up to with the ice cream demo oh sweet and like a few questions which i that was good. Okay. Yep. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so. All right. And uh, what was this one? Damn it, I wish it would give me the 1054. Okay. Yeah, do you have, so I gave you a review on this. Let's see, have you addressed, okay, you've addressed the review comments. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, only available in, great. Um, okay, updated, can you target? This is giving an error. Oh, so when you didn't grab the return value, or you didn't grab the yielded value and it threw an error? Yes, yes. Huh. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. All right, so and everybody, I so there was a recent refactor of all of the cache download stuff, and so if you need to do internet stuff, sync URL open and sync URL retrieve, do the do the protocol validation, um, and then sync URL retrieve and validate does uh, download plus hash validation. Um, so this is very interesting. So if you don't call, maybe this is not returning. What is call doing? return wrapped okay so wrapped yield result yield result oh it was syntax error i guess what if we don't grab that value it was giving a syntax error a syntax error wow okay um no, i'm not sure but probably it was giving that That's very interesting. Um, okay, we'll take a look. You know, I think we're gonna. I'll do. I'll finish the review offline unless there's anything you want to talk about in this meeting. Um, uh, there was one thing that this this one yeah the, the update one. So this CI was failing, uh -huh. and uh, when I made the changes to fix it, it was still failing. But uh, in the uh, like, it is checking out to last release, and then it's trying to run DFFML docs. Oh yeah. So it is not there. That's why it's failing. And the two, uh, two should I examples are failing. I two should I examples are failing. Okay. The, if if those things are things that we want to open a issue that says, let's see. And this is this is why we're running it every day at three a.m. But it must have just started failing. Um, so this is the type of thing. If you see should I failing, this is one where we probably need a better way to do this. Um, so should I? Uh, which one was it? It was, there's a few of these, and, and uh, basically it goes and detects vulnerabilities, and there was a few of them where it was detecting, that it was doing a comparison on the exact number, and we should just be doing compare greater. Um, yeah, assert equal, we should just be doing assert greater, because the vulnerability it numbers only go up. Related to this, right? It is no, related. it's not, yeah, so, and this was, so, and this is a case where we'd want to, um, NPM audit, NPM audit, samples show, yeah. 
and uh, one more thing about this issue was that uh, the code coverage dropped by very small amount so should we write a test for this yes we should add a test for this um right. and you can so use the how, unit how, test how it should be done. so right. use you look at look at the way that the test for the um release stuff works okay. and you and and the way that that uh unit test mock works there um you know i think you can do let's see um let's see Yeah, I think you can you can you can look at the way that the release stuff for unit test mock works, and, and I'll just pull that up right now so you can see it. Um, but do from else or vim test service test dev release. So this has a few things where we're mocking sub process stuff, um, and this is a good a good pretty good example of let's see a fake process. And fake process sort of um, does different things based on you know what what the command that was run was supposed to be. Um, so there's for like there's there's a few commands that get run in the release um, like by subprocess exec, and so we fake that exec creation call and use this make exec, and then we pass different kinds of processes. Um, and, and these fake processes. So we create this fake process class. And when we wait for it to, to finish executing, we say, you know, we can switch based on what the command was that was run. And, uh, and we can say, okay, well, if it was not, if, 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 if it was the archive command, create this archive, because um, that's one of the steps that happens. And, and so you can do similar things, right? So if you need to run something, then you can, you can fake running that. Or, you know, for example, if you need to check the sequence this is probably you probably need to do a similar thing where you need to sec check the check the sequence of things that ran right and that would be you know something like this um so so this is going to be a good reference for you probably and and yeah unit test mock is your friend here to avoid network interaction and uh interaction with um you know other other things also you probably want to make sure that you do this in some kind of let's see you, do, you don't want to run this test, so when you do those link creations and stuff, um, you want to check that you created all the right links. Um, so I would add tests for that, and I would add support for doing this to a target directory. Um, so that way you can create a temporary directory. Um, so for example, all of these docs path, right? So I would say that this root, so take um take pages path as an argument kind of like as you have yeah so take pages path as an argument um take this as an argument via the config structure um then you can set it to a temporary directory for the tests um, and sweet. So, okay. Uh, so can we test it like against the old docs.sh? Test it against the old docs.sh? Uh, no, because that's going to go away. Um, but what you, sh so, so take, take the pages path as an argument. And then make sure that all of the, you know, the right hand side of these is exists, right? So have a separate list that you maintain um, to make sure that these these exist. And uh, if you look at the link, the link command, it does similar things where it like tests. It does it runs the create or oh, this is the create command. It runs the create command and it tests that the correct files are present. Um, and so you'll you'll want to check that those links are present in that in that directory that you pointed at. Um, and let's see what else do we have? Um, 
yeah, that that way we we know that we're creating all the correct links. Um, and then you're also going to want to let's see, yeah, you're going to compare these output calls to make sure that the output was correct, right? Um, and see, because yeah, you're doing the you're doing the print, right? So you're going to grab it. Just this is this you're going to have a very almost exactly similar comparison situation going on there. Um, as as to the release tests, and I think that should be sufficient here, because yeah, you'll want to. Um, set images path iterator iterator. Does iterator recurse? I think. Not sure. Let's see. Our editor. Yeah, it does not recurse. Um, I don't think we have any recursive stuff going on there, but you know, we may eventually. Um, okay. Um, this is a kind CI fail, oh, and this is what I meant to say. We add, we want to add this as a failing. So, so need to update on comparison to greater than. All right. So, if we submit this, then we will know that I don't know. It's not an enhancement. It's a bug. My mouse is slowly drifting away. Um, okay. Uh, if you submit, if you, sub, if you find an issue that's with the CI, that's not yours, the way that we can communicate that to everyone else, that we know that something's failing, that's not, you know, caused by our PR, it's just random, like, you know, some kind of weird network issue, add a bug that says kind CI failing. And then that way, when other people are saying, I wonder if this is my fault or if this is something else, you know, then they can go and look at this tag and we know which ones might be might be um might be and this is not a very descriptive issue chase um so this is sometimes uh the npm audit tests for example this is another example so uh fail because the endpoint for the npm audit api is down and that's what this issue is about um, and so if you see that in the test, you'll know. You'll know, you know, that, that it's not your fault. Um, and then, you know, that your PR will be merged anyways, if you don't worry about fixing that. Um, okay. Uh, and then let's see. Yeah, so the image is to copy. Um, that I think might need to be add target to args and validate. That Actually, that, that's what that's what is called when you go into Dunder 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 Enter uh, with that wrapper of cache download. So yeah. So I just called it directly. So yeah. That's the job. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the thing is, this is a context manager. So when you enter the context, and this is the, the tricky part exactly. about it being both a, um, you know, in the context manager. maybe we just need to decorate this function with it. Because if we decorate the function, uh, then it'll... The thing, that, uh, the, that thing was that, in that thing was that the path that I needed to oh, yeah. was only generated at the bottom part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to write it twice in the same, same class. Hmm. Let's see. Add our this must yeah that must that's the function that's called on entry. Huh? Yeah, that's sort of very awkward looking. Um, you know, I'm and I'm I'm thinking, is there a way that we can just is is there a cache down like this cache download decorator? Is there a way that we can also make it used? Um, you know, as just a, a single hey download this file. Um, but um yeah 
Um, that's annoying that they can't do it all different ways. Maybe it doesn't we even need to be. We can sync URL retrieve, but uh, it would not check for the file is already there. Of course, so. Yeah, you know, maybe this doesn't even need to be a decorator. It's like, why does it need to be a decorator now? Um, I'm realizing because we could just, you know, you could, one could just call it at the beginning of, of the of the function. Um, no, it needs to be a decorator because of all the should I test. That's why. Because uh, we have this, should I test in the cache? Basically, there's this is what's going on. So, Yash, um, Yash, Varshni a while ago added all this stuff to should I to make it so that we can run. Where is it? Examples to make it so that we can run um, run multiple static analysis checkers and within the tests basically there's this binaries and so we can maintain all the versions of well we could i guess maintain the arguments in this file um we might want to change these to not be decorators because it's really just a synchronous operation there's really no reason this thing needs to decorate anything was there a reason does it it passes it it the I don't understand. Yeah, you know, I don't know why we made this a decorator. It doesn't need to be a decorator. That needs to change at some point. So let's just change that. Let's make a note. Um, can you open an issue, an enhancement issue that says to change that cache download? Um, we need to change cached download and friends uh, to not be a decorator. There's no reason it needs to decorate something because decorating means that it would need to take that function to do something, and there's it doesn't need the function that it decorates. I don't. I was a, an oversight. Um, okay, could could you open issue to do that? Oh, sure, I will do that. All right, great, thank you. Um, okay, and the rest of this, you know, we'll all all sort of cover more in depth uh, offline. So I think there's a, there's a couple more things here. But yeah, um, sweet, great. Um, and then let's see, 1040. Um, and this was CI job to validate commit message format. Okay, so this, what, what, what was the question here? So, so, so how, how, how reject we should be and how should we def define that what is valid and what is invalid? If yeah. I had an idea, like we can uh, uh, go from L1, L2, like the tree command gives us L1, L2 of a directory. Mm -hmm. So we can see that those paths are there. If, if our commit message splitting on that colon gives that two paths, consecutive paths, then we can uh, call it valid, otherwise not. Yep, I think that's a great idea. Um, and I think that we should, you know, support. So basically it has to match if you've changed, if you've changed. So, um, uh, sub module uh, file must match a file must match much commit message means that you must have changed um, submodule file. But it is um, not always true that we are changing like that, right? Yes. And so you should support, should also support um, submodule blah, blah, blah. Um, if any paths under submodule are changed. Uh, so you sh you can go higher, um, right? So if, if you want it to be more generic, right, you could just say submodule, right? If you change multiple things under there. Um, if you only change one thing, then you should be, you know, specific here. Um, so if, if you only change submodule slash file, then we, you know, we should see submodule colon file. If you change submodule file and submodule util, then we could see, you know, you could say submodule or you could say submodule util or submodule file, right? Because we want to encourage people to be as specific as possible. So you can see generally what changed as you look through the log, right? Um, 
So yeah, so so you know we we have so to. There, there is a thing like there are some files in the root as well. Like for example, if we're changing change log, then what what should be the case? Then? Yes, well, and so if you're changing change log, then you know change log is your path, right? Um, so if 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 you're changing something at the root, then that is your identifier, right? Um, then there's also special cases like if we change things for all of the plugins. Um, so special cases to support um, and let's just look at so git log one line um, uh, how do I get just the messages okay um, um, uh, uh, okay uh, da, 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 da. Get a log print one line only commit message. All right, this will give us sort of format B. Well, that was incredibly unhelpful. Um, I, you know, look, just look at this, uh, you know, look at the log for sort of examples and, and we'll go from there. Um, but, okay, yeah, here, sort, unique, okay. So what do we have? Yeah, util entry point. I think sometimes we reference by class name. Um, yeah, change log, CI, base, yeah, so if it's in, so yeah, okay, so if, and if it's in the root directory, then we support it as, if, if it's in, so if it's in DFML, so the way I usually hear people think, referencing things to me, so this is, this might be DFML, and then we have DFML slash DFML, right? Um, which is actually the main plugin. So if it's in the main plugin directory, right, that's how we usually reference it is, is you know, as if, uh, you know, we don't say DFML colon base, right? We just say base because this is the main plugin, right? And when we start to split out all the other plugins, that will make, you know, a lot more sense. <laughs> um, so, um, and then let's see. So, yeah, CI, docs, what else do we have here? Clean up. Uh, I, I think I think I should first come up with some solid rules which cover yeah. this in a systematic way, and then we can like come up. Uh, come yeah, we can agree on that. Yeah. So and then yeah, we have before continue. writing anything. Yep. Yep. Um, but generally, you know, it follows that that file structure, and then for plugins, we you know we prefix with the, the plugin directory. So, and then oh yeah, if we do if we do modifications to all the plugins we um we just put plug in yeah so you this is probably a good command to to get a good idea of, of what um what kind of stuff we've had and, and we want to so change log um plugins uh, clean up change log And then this will help you get an idea. All right. All right. Great. Um, so let's. I want. I want to. I want to get the. I want to talk about. I. I want. It, I want Sutantra to show everyone the ice cream demo before we get um, to to. Because we could. Who knows what will happen with the data flow? Um, since that's some debugging and this is a show and tell. So let's. Let's see what we've got. So let me share the screen. So uh, as we uh, like discussed previously, so what I have done uh, right now is, so I have actually, so I have actually got the name of the cities mm -hmm. and their respective URLs and their respective hash values, 
and similarly for all the other cities and for the population data set so i actually went through that uh, data set and mm -hmm. i actually found out which of the csv files have that particular city okay so i found that those data sets and uh, their hash value as well uh -huh. and so like i have this lookup temperature method so it will take the city it will take the month it will just download uh, that particular city. It will download uh, it to the cache directory and then it will return the value which we want to see. Mm -hmm. Yes, so great, and great, great. Population, uh, we are also having another cache directory. And so here, what I was thinking like, uh, we can use pandas for it to return the uh, values for the city. Because in the in the CSV, what is happening is we have uh, the city name and the state is there. Mm -hmm. So this kind of formatting is there in the CSV files. Okay, so, so so can we use like pandas data frame for it? I mean, I think if you just pass this the file name to load the load function, it will instantiate the CSV source and load all the records for for you. Because using pandas to read a CSV file seems like a little bit overkill to include a third party module for that, um, since we already have support for that. Because, you know, like what, what, if you, if you were to, I think if you just said load file path, it should load the CSV file with the CSV source and return all the records. Right. Okay. So uh, actually, the problem here is this part. So in the CSV, like, uh, is it not quoted properly? Uh, no, it is actually quoted like this. So I actually copied this same thing from the CSV file. Okay. Right. But the, the thing which I want to uh, like, like say is like. like for this value, we are actually taking the city itself, but given the city, we will not be able to find what is the state value. Yeah, or, I think, and I think you probably need to be taking the state too as input. Uh, in the population. Yeah, you you may want to just take yeah you may want to take the state as input too, right? And then you 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 yeah then you can just add the you know comma state name. Yeah, because you'll take city, state, and month, and that that should be good. So month is in the lookup template. Yep, yep. I'm just saying, like overall, you'll have city, state, and month. Yeah. And uh, so, like previously, we were discussing about using memory source in the lookup template. So, like, do I need to do uh, that part here? Uh, no. I think that was in reference to you know we had we had gone down that path with with the CSV sources and then the JSON source and we realized okay if you're going to use the JSON source you don't need to use the JSON there's no point in using the JSON source if it's in a different format right um, it makes sense to leverage the CSV source because it's already in CSV format right so um, so and and yeah so you you know you could use the pandas read data frame stuff but then you have to import pandas I don't think there's any need to 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 inc start including third-party modules in this demo. Um, I don't at least see that at, at this point since we already have the ability to read the CSV files, you know. Um, okay. Um, sure, and yeah, one more thing. So like we have cities which have like the same, same state. Mm -hmm. And so these values are actually becoming the same. Like Those values are becoming are the same? Yeah, so I was... What do you mean? I don't... Like, so this is California, right? So it has a single CSV in which this city will be there. And in this file, it is it is the same file itself, and in this we are actually looking for this city. Oh, it's the same file? Yes. Oh, so okay. Like, I was thinking like... So are the files by state? Yes. Okay. We probably have to keep the files by state and... 
Yeah. We probably have to keep a mapping like which city falls in the which state, and there from there we can actually try to get the population. Well, you should be able to. I mean, if you map by state for the population data sets, then you just you know read. You can you can you can index. You can you can read the records. You can just iterate over the records and see which one matches the city name, right? Yes. So it's probably just a case of doing like the same thing that you have right now with the indexing, but just indexing off the state. And then when you iterate over the records, right, you can just do async for record and load and then pass the CSC file. And if, if you, then when you hit one that matches the city name, then, then that's the one you're using, right? Yes. I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> This took us a while the other day. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, this is going to be a really good one. So, do you have us? Can you show us anything running at this point? Or so actually, uh, this lookup temperature thing will actually work. Yeah. Sweet. So, in like uh, in the inputs, what I have given is the city, mm -hmm. and uh, in the month December. I have added. So. To download, it's probably downloading. So this is hey, woohoo! Nice, and great. Also like changes. So this actually value is uh, directly this value. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, getting the hash value and they're just doing. This. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Fantastic. That's great. That's great. Very good. Very good. Um, let's see. It seems it seems a little bit slow. Is it it's it running? It's running the cache downloads, right? I mean, it. Let's see. Maybe it's probably maybe is it that it's trying to validate the hashes of the file because it tries to validate the hash of the file every time, which means it reads in the file. So maybe we should just switch to doing the validation on download. That's probably what we need to do. Yeah. And like one more thing to ask. So in the data flow, uh, what happens when we raise an exception? Uh, if you raise an exception, it will propagate. So it will be raised all the way up unless you pass strict equals false to run. Okay. All right. City not okay yeah so and and uh, yeah so try actually try that say just say if you know just just raise the exception um, remove the if and, and raise the exception so we can see see it happen or you could yeah pass a different city name you know yeah. Great, there we go. And then it'll dump the, uh, I'd say, operation exception. Yeah, let's tell you which, which, um, what the, what the variables that were, it was called with. So yes, it will raise the exception. Good. Uh, if you pass strict equals false, it will not raise the exceptions. Okay. So I had to ask like one more thing, like uh, for the next steps, what I'm thinking is we have to generate a data set for this, right? Mm -hmm. So using these two uh, uh, data flows, we are actually going to generate a data set which will be training. So I had to ask, like, how how do we go ahead with generating the data set? Like, uh, um, let's see. So values, right? And we have to do like some combinations. Um. Yeah. Okay. So the thing was, we were going to. What were we going to do? I think you just need to basically pick. Just pick the cities and the, um, just just you just pick the cities in the months, right? So for just do several cities and several months, and and every, each month for that city, right? And then all of a sudden you'll have your data set. Because um, what is what is what was the, let's see what was the problem description again? Um, I 
ice cream truck ice cream sales demo okay um oh yeah so we need to generate the sales okay yes yeah that's right um yeah, yeah, we need the sales. Yeah, because this is like, you know, this is we're what, what we know is that ice cream sales go up in the summer, right? Um, when, when it's hotter out, people buy more ice cream. Uh, we may not have data for that, but but I think that's a, a, a known fact. Um, so um, so so we're we're doing this demo under that assumption, right? So we're just going to add some data, right? That that roughly corresponds to that. Um, and, uh, and and so what you can do is you can right. So the the thing is, the machine learning will predict the 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 value of the sales, right? You can just throw in numbers, or you can write some kind of function, right? You can run the data flow and then write your ice cream generator function, right? Which is basically like a you know you could do some kind of linear function based on temperature, right? Um, and uh, let's see. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you could just do some kind of linear function based on temperature, or you could just go it, go through your CSV file, list every city with every month that you have in there, you know, and and just write some values, right? Um, so it's sort of what, whatever you wanted to do, right? Um, if you write, you can write a linear function that generates it, and then basically what you'd be doing is you'd be training a model to predict. You know, to, to you'd be training a model to, to understand what function that was, right? That's essentially what's going on here, um, because we're just making up the data. Um, but you know, the, the the principle is is to show how to do you know additions of data, right, um, to an existing data set. So, um, so yeah, you could write an operation to. Um, you could write an operation that that is just a linear function. You know, like blank time y time y what uh mx plus b right and then um you can use the simple linear regression model that's actually perfect because uh because that's once in the standard library so the whole thing doesn't need any plugins at this point uh, which is great um which means it can fall under the fast test fast doc test um uh let's see what was i going to say on that Oh yeah, if you do that, what you can use is the merge command. So you can use the merge command, and okay, it's the merge command is not well documented, is it? We changed it, and so we un removed the documentation, and we forgot to add it back. Um, but if you do dfml merge, oh god, okay, um, I have a giant strike trace trace back from my uh, contextual version conflict um, so if you use the dfml merge command on the command line um, you can basically take a source data set and destination data set and you can use the data flow preprocessing source um, and you can run this your lookup temperature and lookup population and then you add in your your you know your essentially your function generator and then you make the output source another csv source um, and so you basically you're taking the data flow source, you're turning it into, um, you know, use the data flow source to run the data flow that you have, right? And then add in and one more operation. Then that operation is your little your linear function, and then output, you know, grab the output of those those records that you're doing through this modification and dump them to a different CSV source. Um, you know, so that's the destination in the merge command, and now you have your example data set, right? cool this is going to be sweet um this is yeah that's gonna be sweet um and and let's see yeah if you wouldn't mind if you wouldn't mind document that command and then we can have we can add that command actually you know we'll 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 add a, a variation of that command to the to the cli reference the quick reference of the cli page um for for how to do the merge command since like i said that the reason why the docs aren't there it, you 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 should i think i think you won't have too much trouble figuring out what what you know figuring out what to do there um because it's it's basically just you know it's the same syntax we always use you know to find your you can pull from an, the example that does the data flow source um okay. but yeah you should it should be good um 
great great work i'm excited i'm excited this is great um this is i think yeah one of the first one this is the first thing we're doing that's actually adding doing showing the modification to an existing data set um you know rather than entirely creating a new one um so this would be this is a great example good job good job um okay so yeah so that's that's it from my that's side. it from your side okay um so you, i'm just taking notes here so you can use the merge command with data flow preprocessing source to take the lookup operations and add in an operation with man you know this this the the command line argument says config files is going to be really great we need to we need to go get that done because that saves so much copy pasting of giant command line things um if you're in the terminal and you use a terminal editor if you do control x um or what is it okay crap 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 now i forgot Oh no, control E. Control E will pop open your editor and you can write your command line, uh, you know, whatever command line you're trying to type that might be long into your text editor and then it'll just run it. So if you have an environment variable set, if you have the all caps editor environment variable set and you t type at a blank prompt or actually at any prompt, even if you have something existing, or no, wait, okay, no, not if you have something existing. If you type control, control, are you serious? I think I, of course, as soon as I go to communicate what the key combination is, I forget it. Um, well, I swear it was control E. There's a way to do it. Um, and then you can write long command line things. So use merge command with DFP to take a look up operations and add an operation with a linear function that will generate the sales data. Uh, we then the demo then becomes what sorry go for it uh your screen is oh yeah share. i forgot to i said it and then i forgot again okay. the demo becomes i'm training the slide model to function essentially uh, but we don't need to talk about this um, the example is about um, the yeah we don't we don't need to talk about this in the demo we can mention how we did it in like a you know in, in an aside after um, uh, we can mention how we did it in another document um, but not uh, but that will distract from the demo, um, if we include it, the main uh, example document. All right, great. Um, anything else on that, Sudhanshu? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, and I'm going to try to rebase the accuracy stuff with master um, to see what happens there. Um, and then I think we will be on to phase eight. Um, so I just wanted to give that a, a, a shot. Yeah, phase eight is amazing. It's it's like documentation, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and I, I believe that's sort of just updating a lot of our examples, which luckily we all we have most of them tested. And I think there's a do they think there's an issue that documented which ones are auto have automated tests and which ones don't. So hopefully we will catch it all. We will see though. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big one. All right, so Shaw, um, data frame PR. Yeah, John. And we lost. Uh, we just joined. Yeah, uh, I'll just present my screen. Uh, if we could just go through the test once, it'd be great. Uh, yeah. Okay, sounds good. And and who just just joined? I believe this is whoever was on the mailing list. Is it, let's see. Uh, 
um, uh, you, use, user, user, whatever, who, who are you? What, what, what was your name? Let's see. Well, you can speak up when, 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 um, when Shaw's down here and, uh, we'll get to your, your question on, that you, you posted on the mailing list. All right, go for it, Shaw. Yeah. So, uh, this is the test file, uh, and I've written the tests. There's only a couple of tests and they're both running well right now. Great. I'll just go through those. Yeah. All right. Um, and what can you turn logging on and let's see what happens with logging. So just prefix the whole command. So hit the up arrow and go to the very beginning and then just type all caps logging equals lowercase debug. So very beginning. So we're going to set it. This is actually, this is, this is how you set a temporary environment variable for the lifetime of the command that you're about to run is you prefix it with whatever environment variables you want. So, okay, great. So now we get to see the logging. We instantiate the data frame source, feature columns. You know, we enter the context. This is the double context entry thing. And then we enter the, the so we enter the main object and we enter the context. And then let's see, we do the, okay, then we have the update test. All right, so let's, okay, we're printing it and that's what the data frame looks like. All right, let's, let's jump back to the code real quick. All right, so, so walk us through what you're doing here. Uh, okay, so for the first test, what we're doing is we are trying and saving some records in uh, the data frame source and mm -hmm. checking if that works well. Mm -hmm. For the second one, we're just checking if that particular feature is there in the record or not, uh, is there in the data frame or not for a particular record. Okay, sequence source, sequence sources context, context update, sources context. Zero. Assert M A. Okay, so why is let's see, go to setup source. Uh this is setup source. Okay. So where and where is data frame equals DF, so where's DF? Okay, so Zero, okay, so record zero, record one, and record, let's see, my dict. Um, okay, record one. Okay, so the data frame, okay, so let's not leave this data frame over the, in the global namespace. Um, okay. Because I think that, yeah, that makes it confusing which test does what to it, right? Um, so let's instantiate it per test case, and then it becomes really clear what's going on. And let's also make feature calls just be features, um, lowercase features, yeah. Um, and then let's, you know, I think, you know, there's there's there was one for predictions too. Um, and let's, let's uh, so yeah just predictions and features instead of feature calls and, and, and predictions. Yeah, calls. Uh, I actually, I actually uh, thought we could do away with the predictions uh, argument. because oh, it, everything uh, else would be. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. No, yeah, because uh, it was, I could do the same thing with the features argument uh, only. So I thought we could do away with the prediction argument. Yeah, actually, why don't we just make, let's see. Yeah, the source. Well, okay. So you're we'd instantiate the source, and we'd say these are the features we care about, or would we say we care about? Let's see. Mm, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. So what's what is easier? I guess. Okay. We also thought about. Remember how we're going to implement that? Maybe that read HTML and uh, like you know you can you can say read HTML from a, from it pandas data frame source and it will go and grab the an html table and, and turn it into a source and so i'm thinking about that as, as maybe a common use case that will be an extension of this and um if we are thinking about that then um if we're thinking about that then would it be 
would people be specifying in that in that case people would probably say you know they want every column right and they don't want to go and, and write every column in the features right they're like this is my features right is this table um and they maybe have one prediction column in the table right so from that standpoint it makes sense to define the prediction columns because you have to write less stuff yeah like say if you're taking if your config takes a data frame and feature columns and prediction columns and we're saying well you know we really only need to take feature columns or prediction columns because everything else has got to be one of those right in that case it probably makes more sense to take prediction columns because you're probably going to have less 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 of those right so as if from an end user perspective i'm typing less column names if if i'm at, yeah, being asked for the prediction sense. columns okay. sense, sense. so yeah let's yeah. go with that um other than that uh, any inputs um no i don't have any inputs just let's let's uh let's make sure it, this test it was hard i can't follow the test with the fact that the global namespace is active or the the data flow is in the global namespace so r please run the the style stuff um and please um please move the a you know make sure the data frames get instantiated on a yeah. um yeah and then unless you're calling that setup uh data frame or set up source function somewhere else let's just get rid of that um because if we're not calling it multiple times you know let's see either we should be calling it calling it in both test cases or we should not have it at all um because okay. i don't know because because that also you know in test cases it's, it's yeah um okay so yeah so let's do the predictions thing um and let's run the style and um that sounds good all right uh yeah I great thank great you. awesome thank you looking good um okay so what do we what else do we have here i think we're pretty much done with everything um we had someone jump on could you if you could please introduce yourself and, and you're on mute that way we can get to any questions you might have Yes, I am new to DFFML, and I am from India. My name is Utso. Sorry, lost your, lost your cut out there on your name. What was your name? Utso. Utso. All right. Let's yes. See. And how do how do I spell that for for our meeting minutes? Utso. Yeah. Okay. Fine. And I want to join a GSOC project. Okay. Cool. Um, can you spell your name for me for the meeting minutes, real quick? U T S A V. Okay. Oops. All right. Great. Thanks. Well, yeah, it's great. Great to have you. Thanks for joining. So, you were in interested in uh, which project again? Was it uh, Support Achieve Architecture for Model Storage? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, so, let's see. Support, support Archive Storage. Um, and and i think you know i've had we've had trouble trouble I've, I've had trouble getting back to you sorry if you chat on gitter that is usually the best way to reach um everyone uh that's sort of where we all talk the most just just as a future uh future way to get less less um less long response time so sorry about that it's just hard to track things that that ends up being the best place to track conversation um okay. So let's see. Okay. So we want to talk about the support. Let me write down the stuff for the data frame test. So uh, we're going to accept um, uh, prediction uh, columns that store predictions in config instead of features. Um, and then we're going to uh, move the data frame outside of the oh and i just realized we're gonna get into a tricky situation with this um move the data frame outside of the tests um or of the move the data frame to test scope rather than global scope okay um okay support so support archive storage so at a high level the, what's going on here is we want to um, so right now. Can you please share your screen, sir? Oh yeah, thank you. 
Let's see. Resume your presentation. Yes. Okay, great. Can you guys see? All right. So, so at a high level, what's going on here is all the all the models take a um, all the models take a uh, oh, where's the plugins page? So, for example, um, Delphi. So the models all take a directory, which they store their con that that that's where they store the saved model to. Um, that's pretty much the way all of them work. Um, so the goal of this project is to make that into uh, instead take to basically do a massive find replace and say directory is now location. So now instead of all the models have a property named direction, now they all have a config property named location, um, and that location. Now, since it's you know, since we're sort of first 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 step, change the name. Next step, change the functionality, right? And so now the 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 goal is to make you know do the find replace, make sure everything works, right? Run all the tests, make sure everything still works. Then go through and say, um, all right, how do we start making it so that if a location that's given is like a zip file or something like that, that the zip file is opened and extracted to a temporary directory. And then the model uses that temporary directory. And then when the model is done with whatever it's doing, then the contents of that temporary directory gets packed back into the zip file that was referenced by location. And that's essentially the entire project. Um, and you know so there's some some stretch stuff that's defined on top of this you know um where you know if you if you get done with all of that then then you want to start thinking about okay well how would we make it so that this might interact with you know something that's stored at, at like an http address right would we go and download you know that model um uh, etc right and and think about okay well now what if what if you know how could we even use it this is where i'm going with this is could we use a data flow to um could we use a data flow to to specify the could the location be a data flow and if it is a data flow how would that work if we're packing it back up um, too? So because if you specify a data flow, then you can do much more complex things. Um, for example, you know you could do you could integrate authentication to some kind of arbitrary third-party resource. It doesn't constrict the code to being um, you know it's 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 much more dynamic. Um, so did you have any questions on on any of that? Okay, so oh. now I understand one. One basic thing is, first of all, we have to change directory to location name, rename that thing yep. and test all thing that yep. is working or not. Yes. And secondly, we have to dot zip or dot tar, tar file and we have to check it is working or not loading from that file or not. Yep. Yep. That's that is correct. Okay, and any reading for these things can I get? Okay. Um, one second, I'm writing that in the notes. Uh, directory to location, rerun all the tests. Okay. Um, Further reading for this. Um, so I think that, that that there was some stuff in the um, this is the auto ML one project ideas archive storage for models. Okay, so I think there's some yeah there's some links here. So basically, I would look at the model plugins and just you know play around. So play around with implementing. So and this is yeah. So play around with the model tutorials. Go through the model tutorial because the model tutorial shows you. Well, you know, it doesn't really, does it really? Yeah, it doesn't really, unfortunately, show the A enter, A exit methods. Um, what would be good for that? Um, so this simple source tutorial, or the, the complex source tutorial, might be actually a good thing to look at, too, um, because it has these a enter and a exit methods which is where you know this type of thing might happen right because so all of the all of the 
all, everything in DFFML has this double context entry pattern. And uh, so this is a good document to go over because this sort of shows you what might be, you know, what's happening here. And so this is with an example with a, with a, a simple source and a simple model. Um, and now when we implement, you know, the way that these are implemented and, and you may want to just dive into the DFFML slash model slash model code. Um, and that would be a good thing to look at. Maybe, you know, look at the, uh, look at code for simple model, uh, in DFML slash model slash model, uh, your primarily interested in the uh, A enter and A exit methods. Um, because these or because this is where you'll be adding code to um, extract to temporary directories, etc. Um, so because these get called every, so this double context entry pattern that happens, um, this double context entry pattern that happens, it triggers the a enter method. So whenever you hit a with block in Python, it triggers the enter method, the underscore underscore enter method. If you do an async with block, it triggers the a enter method. And so um, that is basically that allows us to do setup and tear down around, you know, like a con. Yeah, so you can do setup and tear down. And I would also look at the context manager um, page in the documentation or context lib. Um, so context lib is really fun and it lets you do all this, uh, context manager stuff. Um, so I would check this out. Um, this is fun stuff and this will tell you more about, you know, sort of, uh, yeah, you know, context managers and, and what, you, what you can do with them. Um, so, and that will tell you also, you know, what, you know, how does this stuff work? Because this is, you know, this, this is how Python, how you do how you do set up and, and tear down in Python essentially. And uh, so play with the context manager stuff from the, from the main Python documentation, um, understand how this stuff works. And then, um, and then look at the A in or A exit methods and think about, okay, how do I, if I had a zip file, cause you'll see the self config directory in the simple model. Um, and you could think about, okay, if I had a zip file, there how would i turn that if say how would i turn if someone you can look at the way it is now at self.config.directory in the a inner method of simple model and you can say okay i think there's something that creates the directory if it doesn't exist you could say hey what happens if i if i provide a zip file path to an existing model and you can start changing the code right now for example like the simple model code you could start changing the test case for the slr model and you could mod you could write some test cases which provide a directory which is a zip file or a tar file and then you can start working with that a inter method in model py of simple model and modifying the code there that was creating the directory if it not it didn't exist to instead now trying to use the zip file module or the tar file module to extract that 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 directory that, that archive that you gave um, and you can, you know, create the archive by running the model and zipping up the directory or tarring up the directory. And that, that's how you can get your central, you know, your, your, your thing to work with there to start with. Does that make sense? Does that sound like a good plan? Yes, it's... Sweet, sweet. Um, great. And then, uh, yeah, like Gitter, Gitter is probably, and I, let me just say this again for everyone because I've been realizing this. Gitter is probably the best way to reach, you know, me and the fellow, your, your, your fellow students and, and, and other mentors, um, because everybody is on there. And if one of us doesn't see it, someone else can see it. And, and there's been a lot of great discussion happening on there. Uh, a lot of great help across people. So, so that's really great. Thanks everyone. Um, for, you know, it's always good to, to help each other. This helps things move forward faster. Um, well, cool. Is, does anybody have any other opens today? Did we get everybody? Does anybody have anything else? I want to also know about uh, drafts of GSOC. Yeah. What is the last date? 
So that's on the milestones page. Process. Um, so the, the milestones page says that, and I believe it's this weekend. Um, where was that milestones? So yeah, drafts do. So basically if you get the drafts to the, to, to the Gator channel by, um, by April 3rd, then we can guarantee that we can give you some sort of feedback on your draft um, before the proposals are due. Um, but if you don't get it to us by then, you know, we, we can't, can't, can't guarantee that we'll have time to look at it um, before, before drafts are due. So if, if you can get it to us at any time, you know, before then, but that's just the last date. And, and if you do get it us after that date, then you know, we'll we'll tr we'll tr we'll try to get to it, of course, but no guarantees, right? We'll guarantee that we get to it if, if we get it to us on that date. Um, great. Any other questions from anyone? Uh, one last question from my side. Uh, like, I am targeting the idea for auto ML thing, uh -huh. and uh, like, uh, how shall I start with it? Uh, like, shall I create some issues, or what kind of issues can I create so that I could start with this? Autonomous project. I have hmm. gone through the tutorials which are mentioned in the ideas portion. Well, um, I think sort of starting to pro, you know, starting to, to to prototype what it looks like, right? Because the thing is, you're going to be implementing, you know, how let's, how to start. Um, so you're going to be implementing a model, right? And that model is essentially going to sit on top of other models. Um, and if you looked, so we've got some stuff, if you look at model and then load models dynamically. So this is kind of, you know, how, and actually I think I realized this needed to change the other day. Um, so looking at, at this, so uh, start writing a model. Um, uh, load other models, or model dynamically uh, based actually you know uh, yeah load other nodes to base um, uh, you can load all by passing nothing to dot load uh, or a specific list by passing or a specific model by passing it's Entry point string um, found on this page as heading of model. So basically, anything if you see, so when you see, where is the models part of this page? Uh, oops. So if you see, um, any of these models, if you see VW model, you can pass it to load here. Well, I can't paste it in that. Um, you can pass it to load, and then it will load that VW model if that package is installed. Um, so you can play play around with loading a few models, and if you if you don't pass anything, this is why this needs to be changed. If you don't pass anything, it'll load every model that is installed. Um, and so, and this is oh, that should be a reference, but it's not. Um, yeah, it, it'll and, and so you play around with that and, and figure out, OK, well, how would I dynamically instantiate models? And then what you know, what are the steps that that I need to go through to create auto ML? Right. Like, how do I do parameter tuning? Right. How would how would I know which parameters that I can tune and which ones that I can't? Um, because you got to You have to think about for all of these projects. Right. The entire code base is 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 you're able to change it. Right. So for anybody who's thinking about doing a project. Right. You're you you have complete license to change anything should it need to be changed right so if you think that for some reason you know if you're like okay wait we need more information on which parameters are tunable we need to go through and add that type of thing to each 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 field then you that's that's you know that's that's up for grabs right but just if you're gonna right if you if you're going through and you're designing your project and you're like oh we need more information from the models right like i need to know which models are regression or richer classification right to be able to choose what i want for this problem then you're going to find out that okay we need to go have some self-identification in the models for example um 
Himanshu found that he needed to have the length of a source um, when he was doing his project. Um, and so he implemented the, you know, he said that we need to go implement a length method on all the sources. Um, and so, um, so he did that. Um, and, 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 you know, now when, now we need to go implement the length method on all the sources, right? Um, because things like, you know, uh, like, you know, if you if you need to find all possible values of a feature, for example, uh, then you have to go through all the all the different records. Um, so we found that there are definitely operations that require that we go through the entire data set um, to to enumerate possible values and things. And so we discovered, okay, we need to change the APIs of everything in here, right? Uh, all the sources, right? You may need to change find that you need to change something about all the models, right? Just figure out what those things that you need you will try to come up with as clear as a path as possible, right? because and I've said this to a few people, but if you're designing your schedule, right, this is the schedule that you're, you're being graded on, right? So design a schedule fit. You want to do a, you want to do a good amount of work to figure out what is a schedule that you would want to be held accountable to, right? Um, Cause you're, you're, you're designing your own accountability schedule here. So, so make sure that it's realistic and make sure you know what kind of work you're cutting out for yourself. Um, so, yeah. Any, any other questions on anything like that or anything at all? All right. Got it. Not from my side. Great. OK, so we're a fair amount over today. Sorry we went over. Um, I know it's long. Yeah, Hashim? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, like about the load uh, function, mm -hmm. uh, I think it only allows you to uh, either send a single uh, Either uh, load a single model or all models. Does yeah. Allow, uh, like multiple models. I think yeah, that might it might be good if we started to allow multiple models. That would probably be a good idea. Um, I uh, I don't I don't think we have that implemented. So you know that might be one of the changes one wants to make. Yeah. One more thing. I have a pending PR. If you could, uh, you know. Oh yes, the class. Yeah, that guy. Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't quite gotten to that yet, and so that and the light GPM are both still on my docket. So, and there was one more thing I was going to do after this meeting. Um, does anybody remember what what was that? Um, okay. Uh, well, okay, forever lost. All right, great. Um, uh, okay. All right. Well, I think I dropped something else, unfortunately. But so light GPM. And uh, we'll see H H two O model and um, 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 confidence. Yes, confidence. <laughs> Jesus God. All right. Okay. Um, let me write those down. I cleaned up my desk. All my sticky notes are gone. I got to put them all back. Um, great. Well, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.